This is episode 71 of the Steady Trade Podcast with your host, Tim Bowen. If you got a $500 account or a $1,000 account, you pretty much have to trade 50 cent or $1 stocks. And Steven Johnson. My strategy is just don't even look at the market. Don't even open stocks to trade. Just go outside, have a nice day, and you'll, and you'll get through. Today, the guys review their team's progress over the first few days of the Steady Trade Paper Trading Challenge. Steady paper trading things of trading. It's an interesting discussion covering a lot of different terms and strategies. And if you hear one that you're not familiar with, ask them in a comment on the website or on YouTube, and the guys will address it in a future episode. But now, let's jump right in. Back with the first update to the steady paper trading things of trading paper and competition stuff. Anyway, someday I will get the title right, but, but it is not today apparently. So what just kind of want to go over quickly getting started. We're a couple days into the, the, the paper trading competition now. I can remember that part of it at least. So um, we started last Thursday, which would be November 1st. We're just, uh, we're recording this on a Monday. So my participants have had a couple days to actually kind of get their feet wet. So the process I took with my team, and, and we'll see how Stevens and my coaching styles vary, basically what I told uh, Kara, DJ, and Josh to do on Thursday and Friday is just kind of do their own thing. Trade the way they would, you know, because all of them have a little bit of experience. So I'm like, hey, do what you would normally do on Thursday and Friday. We got all month, you know, part of part of steady trading and part of the, the kind of consistently profitable approach I take is, you know, it's not about one or two days. It's about consistency over time. But I wanted to just kind of get a feel of what they would be looking at, the type of stocks they like, as well as their style, et cetera. So um, all three of them made trades. Um, only one is currently profitable, but what I like is both uh, Kara and Josh kept their losses small and they were in trades that, you know, that, that I was interested in. So start, I'll start out with, with Kara. She just made, or Kara. I, can, I, can, I can't get Kara. the... I can't get the some, paper. I, some you know, mental. Well, we just got started. Cut me some slag. So, <laughs> so Kara was in a stock that was actually at the top of my list last week. Fitbit. F I T is Ooh. the ticker. I'm sure, most of you are familiar with Fitbit. So, my, my um, team were in Fitbit as well. We had. We yeah, had. probably Why still running for my team. Yeah. Why is everyone in Fit though? Because. Uh, for me, on that first day, I mean, it was an earnings winner, but it was it was on its third green day and it had gapped up. And I, I told my team not to chase it. And I thought, in the next few days, it's probably a short, if anything. Well, depending here's, on how here's what I would say. And, you know, um, I've, I've talked about this a little bit in Stock Straight Pro the last couple of days. I mean, it's been, you know, when it comes to like momentum stocks and movers, it's been pretty, we, we, we picked a very bad month to start this paper trading competition so far. It's I mean, things have slow. changed quickly. Yeah, I mean, Thursday, Friday, and then today, Monday, I mean, wow. Today, I was like, whoa, what's moving? Yeah. So, I would defend Kara a little bit in the fact that it was one of the few interesting stocks that was an earnings winner, like you said. It did break that key level of six bucks, but as much as it pains me to agree with you, I also feel like, it was kind of like the one of the few stocks out there, hence the reason I gravitated to it. Kara gra gravitated to it. Probably some of your team did as well. Yeah, no, I, I think pretty much everyone, every one of my team was in fit, and I don't think anyone really took any profits. Yeah. Well, um, because there was none to be had. There was none because to be the had market fizzled sure. out, and, and, and Fitbit basically went nowhere. And today it's at six bucks, just like it was two days ago. But. But I mean, for me, I think it, it, the overall market's shaky. There's not much confidence in the overall markets. I think Fit had a kind of a big gap up. If you look at, on the daily chart, there's a lot of resistance around that around that area where it kind of gapped up and spiked to. And I, I was just like, I, I told I told the guys to uh, not do it. And I think Louis, most of them, 
well, pretty much they all did it, but I told Louis specifically don't do it. And Louis was like sending a video back saying, I know you told us not to, but I'm sorry I did and I lost. And I thought, that reminds us of someone. <laughs> I was like, don't worry, I'm not going to be mad at you because I am terrible at following instructions too. Yeah, it's, it's the, the sins of the father type thing, you know. Yeah, the, the, the son is doomed to repeat them. But uh, I mean, it's tough because I've kind of, it's, it's, it's what I've figured out straight away. I mean, Liz, the, the, the one thing that I've come across with all of pretty much most of my team, two out of three members, at least with Liz, especially uh, Liz loves to chase. Liz, Liz loves to chase action and she loves to see a couple of green candles and, and scalp, scalp the momentum. And your favorite scene is and, a kind and, of now, a, now currently Liz is your Liz is your leader, right? She's up two grand. Yeah, so Liz it's is working, so running far. away. Okay. All right, it's working, but it's kind of it's 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 that hindsight which you probably had with me as well. It's like it works until it doesn't. Well, and, scalping is always a great strategy as long as you can stick to your stops. You know, it's like I mean, you could take a hundred dollars. 15 times a day and have a good day, but you know, you got one bad trade and all of a sudden you're back to break even. So. Yeah. So, I mean, with Liz, I've, 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 it's more kind of pulling that back and saying, you need to get in on these, on these flags. If you, if you're going to try and chase in any kind of way, are you going to try and buy these intraday breaks? You, you want to be buying these like bull flags where, where you, where you, you're buying just as it lifts. You're not buying the third green candle because 95% of traders lose then obviously. They're all, you're doing what they're doing, you're buying, you need to do the opposite. So that was my main advice to Liz. And, and it was kind of with Louis, it was more uh, the, it was more trying to stick to the VWAP hold. I was thinking if you, if you want to go long, if you want to play these multi-day swings, if you're more comfortable with these longer, longer, uh, longer term setups, maybe not intraday setups, may, maybe more swing in a, a stock, then try and buy around the VWAP because if you're buying Fitbit three days up and you're buying it way above the VWAP, you kind of overextended on the daily and you're overextended on the intraday. So my advice to him was look, look to buy our VWAP because then you can risk our VWAP. Don't, where are you going to risk off if you're buying way off VWAP? That reminds me of, of, of DJ actually. So what I like about what DJ is doing is um, he is very, um, very open to long and short. What I love, what he's, and, he, and he's my leader right now. I think he's, as of uh, Friday night, he was up 1,600 in two days. Not bad. Um, and what he is doing and what I like is, you know, he's, he's very, you know, again, he's willing to go long or short. He's very focused on VWAP. He's buying these higher price stocks, which I think is a great strategy. Remember in the paper trading challenge, if, if that's what it's called, we're, we, we've given them $30,000 of, of, of a, you know, a fictional account balance. So, I, you know, to me, if you got a $500 account or a $1,000 account, you pretty much have to trade 50 cent or $1 stocks. DJ is going after these $20 stocks and he's short and VWAP fails and he's buying VWAP breakouts. And um, I think so far, yeah, I really like what he is doing because of the fact that, you know, he recognizes, I mean, in the grand scheme of the world, I mean, you know, on Wall Street, they would laugh at a $30,000 account, but in the world of penny stocks, a $30,000 account is, you know, on the bigger size and you can trade these $20 stocks. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, for me, the, the first day was pretty cool. Uh, we started off, I've got a little chat room. So we I started off the first day with them live. Might have had a couple of drinks. I was a little bit, so I was a little bit drunk in, in true Jeevan fashion. Uh, it, was, and I, it, it was day one of, of no remember <laughs> November. <laughs> it was, um, did you, it was did you go from sober November. October to no, Rome, no remember yeah. November? It was <laughs> November, November. I mean, basically, I, I knew I had this paper trading challenge, but my friend said, do you want to go for a couple of drinks? It's the afternoon, and I went. So well, I I'm, glad, little, you know, I'm glad you, I don't you, know if the guys you knew, value I don't the know. time of the listeners. You value <laughs> my time. You value the producer, Glenn's time. I'm glad you value all of these hundreds, maybe thousands of people's time so much that you're kind of like, ah, screw it, let's go drinking. No, but I, I showed up and I did a live <laughs> I did a live two hour session with them. I was, I was, I can't remember what I said. I can't remember what we talked about. <laughs> but I, I was on the live chat room on audio for two straight hours with the guys. Just, just kind of going live. What should you be trading? What should you not be trading? Where should you be? Where should you be taking it? I don't know when that call ended, but I, I remember it was a good, I was on a good two hours with them. Uh, and other than that, it's been, it's been, it's been uh, kind of morning kind of watch lists. 
Uh, or maybe not even watch list because it's been so quiet. I'm like, I'm like, this is the only stock I would take today. <laughs> like, uh, there's a, there's only one for me. Uh, or I've been like reviewing video recaps. But you it's found same- one stock to trade today. I, I couldn't find Come any. On. <laughs> AYTU, come on. AYTU was an obvious gap. That was, you know, you know, as much now. Now, one thing I, I, I didn't check. You know, I, I hated that stock as soon as I saw the chart. Was that did did IB have borrows? Was it was it easy to borrow or not? Uh, I'm not sure. Those okay. rules haven't been. Uh... <laughs> I thought I was getting away with those rules. No, no, I know what you're going to do. It's going to impossible to borrow stocks. I, I, I'm not afraid of that. Because the, pro- the thing is, especially, I just pray. Oh, I so pray some old, some... for some low float runners. Because, man, I love the fact that you'll be able to, your team will be able to short these impossible to borrow stocks. Uh, they don't do it, though. They don't because do this it. Is like... the thing. When, when their account goes in the red, even if it's a paper account, I get the money. <laughs> they got to send no, me but- monopoly money when they <laughs> blow up and, and destroy their account shorting some 600,000 float stock. Uh, AYTU did look like it was about a 600,000 float stock, but you could have got about 30% on that. But the thing yeah. is, I, I can't, right now, I can't get them to do it. Like I, told, I mentioned it three times in the chat room this morning. I was like, guys, keep working on it. Keep working on it. Look at Let AYTU. Let me talk to them. I'll, 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 offer, I'll, I'll encourage them. I will encourage every one of your teammates or team members to, to short a day one low floater with news. I will, I will, I will make the sales pitch. But honestly, it's tough. It's tough because like for a lot of people, it's naturally very terrifying to short Should- these stocks on day one. It's just not <laughs> terrifying for me because I'm mental. But, <laughs> yeah, and I've just, I've seen it so many times, but you, but what I've learned from this process is people, even though you can say you could do this, you could do that people are still super inclined to just lean towards what they're comfortable with and lean towards their own styles. And I well, guess and that's why, is, you know, that's why I kind of asked them to just trade those first couple of days on their own, because what I wanted experience. to see is, you know, if they were short in 10 stocks, I'd be like, okay, that's, that's what they're comfortable with. That's what they're familiar 40, with. So 40. that's what their forte is. But, but yeah, it, I mean, two immediate problems. One is chasing and two is playing stocks that aren't volatile enough. They're the immediate to, uh, to, cause I, I'm not going to try and influence the guys to, to get in a situation where they blow up the accounts and blame me. What I'd rather do is just say, think about this next time. Think about that next time. Yep. This isn't quite volatile enough. Have you thought about, and, and maybe thinking about all the variables. Cause a lot of people I see are like kind of going in into a day. And I'm like, well, what's the catalyst? Do you know what the catalyst is? Do you know what the news is? Do you know what the sector is? Perfect. Have you thought about the volume? Have you thought about the resistance? Just stuff like that. So just in, in kind of in summary, so Kara, um, she made that one trade on Fitbit. She also liked MU, which Micron Technology, another higher price stock that I like. Her what's, going on with, what's going on with these higher price stocks and these guys? Is this well, your it's influence? Just, it's it's you know it's, it's, it's just no it's no leave. remember November like, right now. I mean we need some we need some. Here's the thing I think and you know time will tell. You know we're we're recording this episode the day before the elections in the U.S. I think now maybe I'm desperate for a reason, but it just feels like everybody's yes waiting for the election or something. So it's like I mean we yeah. have low flow runner. We haven't had you know we had the weed run. But that got destroyed after October 17th. So it's just been kind of quiet out there. So. Yeah. You're getting these dojis on the spy as well, aren't you? You see these dojis where people just don't know which way to turn on the market because they're just oh. waiting for the election. Yeah, I see that. Do you think it's a bear market? Yes. Last question for you. Do you are you finally ready to admit it? <laughs> Probably going into a bear market. No. <laughs> they're still not ready to admit it. No. We just get by the election and we're right. <laughs> Hang on. What was, what was that word that you said, Stephen? Dojis? Doji candle. It's Japanese, I think. What, is, so what does that mean? What's the, what's a doji? Doji, a doji means where it's a, it's a, it's a thin-bodied candle with a wick at, on the high end and a wick on the low end, which means throughout the day, the range has gone high and low and ended somewhere in the middle. And it just, it's a sign of indecision means, that the market doesn't know where to go. Yeah, the market is just shit is what a doji is. It basically like, means the market's shit. Yeah. <laughs> It just means there's indecision and no one knows whether to go long or short. To answer your question, I do not think we're in a bear market yet. I asked my friend here, Mr. Bull, and he doesn't believe it either. So um, I just I think, think we're, so. in an, we're in an undecided period. We'll see what happens after the election. Now, I could be wrong. You know, I'm not – anybody that predicts what the overall market is going to do is 
is one of, you know, if they're full of shit, most likely. And if they're right, they got lucky. Okay. All we can do is react. It's 50, 50 really. Yeah. Yeah. You, all yeah. we can do is react to what happens. Now I think, and this is obviously just my opinion that we'll get going after the election, but you know, we, we got to get through this couple day period and we'll see. So but it's, anyway, it's, it's, in it's, summary, in summary, well, you, I keep trying to summarize Kara and you keep interrupting me. Because she, you don't care about her. Care focused about on her. tech stocks, which I like. <laughs> um, her biggest goals for this coming week are planning and sticking to her trades. Because um, she, she had about four or five other ideas that she didn't take. I think she's just kind of, you know, again, I think, and, and maybe your team members are kind of experiencing this too. I think a lot of people are kind of getting used to the freedom of being able to freely trade since it's not real money. They're not under the PDT, et cetera. So, um, so Josh made one trade as well last week. He was, uh, you know, he was busy, but that is part of, you know, part of all of our lives. I mean, I mean, it's difficult to sit in front of that computer every day. Now, what I, what I like is again on his own. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of really happy with the, with the team members I have because on his own, Josh was focused on a stock that I've been watching for weeks. It's on the stock. It's been on the stocks to trade watch list, which you can get for free at stocks trade.com forward slash watch list, uh, NIHD. And what I love, is, uh, you know, Josh broke it down in his video. Um, it was a breakout, no overhead resistance. And then ultimately, you know, he, and Andy entered at nine forty five, which I love. I, I, I love avoiding the open. Um, especially for some of these kind of breakout type charts, let them shake out all the degenerates and then join a trend kind of midday, late day, I call it. But, uh, ultimately, you know, he got stopped out for 10 cents a share and it proceeded to rip like 80 or 90 cents a share later that day. So, um, you know, I think he's still a little bit in that small account mentality, which is fine. You know, first of all, if you're trading real money, always keep your tights your stops tight. But I think, you know, I think he's thinking about, you know, his own real small account. And, you know, if I was trading a six, $7 stock with a $30,000 account, like we are in this paper trading competition, no way would I, you know, stop out for 10 cents a share. And if you would have let it give it a little bit more range, he would have had a, a killer, killer trade. Yeah. And I, I mean, for me, I don't think there's anything, anything too individual thing it's a uh, kind of for my team i see more collective collective mistakes and and i can make a i can make a comparison to advertising a little bit when a lot of people do advertising the thing very much at the 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 thing that's right in front of them or the advert that's right in front of them but they never really think of the the brand or the bigger picture or or the the brand's corporate objectives or how it's really going to engage the audience and it's kind of i just see the same traits in trading as well which is weird because I see a lot of people just staring at the intraday chart and, and they're just like jumping in one second and jumping out the other and they're not really stepping well, back. I and think, thinking, you know, that, that's the bummer is, you know, I think especially whether it be Twitter or whatever, there's this, and it, and it annoys me, it actually pisses me off is the better term. There's this bag of goods that people are sold on Twitter and stuff that making 100 trades a day is the way you do it. So I think a lot of that that's a i mean that bites a lot of new traders because they they see these guys posting all these in and out all day long and they think that is the way to be consistently profitable it's not in my opinion. yeah no but i mean i just i think it's born of a fear of kind of losing the profits or not having the confidence to properly have conviction in what you're doing as a trader because people are seeing green and they're thinking oh i'm i'm in profit and then they see a lower high and they think, I better just get out. There's a lower high there, I might be failing. And there's because a lot of new traders don't have the confidence to have conviction, they're just they're getting in and out too frequently. And it's it's the key mistake that all beginner traders make. They will they will let the losers run and they'll they'll cut the winners too quickly. And it's just yeah, more yeah, from which, a lack which, of experience. You know, I'm sure everybody heard what Steven said, but he's got that stupid accent. You might not have been able to understand him. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll talk about your accent in a minute. We'll talk about it. I don't want to make a documentary but, but, about your accent. But he makes a great <laughs> point, and I'm not sure if you heard what he said, and that is the fatal flaw of so many new traders is they let their losses run 
and then they cut their gainers too quickly. And it's the, you know, it's the exact opposite of what you should be doing. You should be cutting those losses at a hundred bucks and letting the winners run, especially, you know, like back to Josh and his NIHD trade. I mean, this thing still two days later, it's still at 52 week highs. Now I understand he made his trade. He, he owned it, but he could still be in that stock two days later. And if the market warms up a little bit, that thing could keep going for days and days. So um, run Stevens, you know, uh, uh, accent through Google Translate, and he is right. You know, cut those losses and let the winners run. Don't do the opposite. Yeah, but I mean, if, and if there's one thing I'll probably talk about with the guys, and I'll put it on the next video, less, little video lesson that I do with them, it's probably to really factor a decent risk reward because I think a lot of we're hitting a lot of singles here. We're hitting a lot of like one to one risk reward trades, which we're taking like a couple of percent here, losing a couple of percent there. But it's not really going to kind of uh, do anything. Market I, I, is choppy though. Market's choppy. I, yeah, I was going to say I hate. Market's choppy. You know, uh, it, it, it burns my soul to stick up for your team members because I despise them passionately. <laughs> But uh, uh, but uh, when it comes uh, to picking uh, the two or three days to do a momentum stock trading competition, I don't think we could have been stuck with a worse two and a half days so far. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like with with your team, like I want to hate them. Like I want to hate your team. They hate you. No, I don't yes, believe it. No, I don't you hear the things it. we say about you. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, I mean, I know I can be pretty abusive, but the stuff they say about you. I can just imagine woo! the filthiest, ah! detrimental, horrible oh. words coming out of Kara's mouth. <laughs> I, I, I can just imagine it. And, and I can imagine the songs that DJ T Tamani Tanani Tenacity's making, whatever his name is. So, so rememberable, I forgot him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't even... What, T DJ, what video? I can't even remember what it was about. Forgot about it. <laughs> but anyway... But yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it's funny because Liz is just like this ball who's just in and out of everything and she's taking taking quick gains dj's really? very active too i think he had seven trades one day so we, we, both, we both sounds like we both have a gunslinger so yeah liz liz is a female testosterone dope gunslinger <laughs> um She's like she's on Sustin on Indecker or whatever whatever them things are. Well, it's that better than all that. The body build as well, no. I mean, <laughs> you should probably dial back on that. <laughs> but um, but then Louis, I mean, it's so funny how like trading reflects people's personalities. It's so personal. It trading, is when you think about yeah. it, it's, it's because Louis is like this chilled out, more quiet guy. He'll have a laugh with you, but he's a bit more measured, and it really comes across in his trading because you'll take these swings. And they're not very volatile, and you'll be like, "I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit in this one," and I'm like, I, I, "I'm thinking ah, you might be right, but you're gonna, you're gonna burn a little bit of brain power on that swing." Do you know what I mean? And you might be missing other opportunities where Liz is just bing bang bosh. Uh, she'll be in and out, and she'll take her gains, but she might win big now, but you might lose big later. So you need to drum a bit of care in that. So to and kind Jude, of Jude's been a slower approach as well. Jude's been quite slow into this as well. I've only seen one trade from her. Uh, but I think sometimes careful is careful is good in the early days, and, so and then on the last few days, we'll, we'll we're, we're just a couple days fast. into this, so it's, yeah, it's, it's very early days. To get a early read, doors. what what do you how, how you feeling? How you feel about your team? Um, I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> I'm confident as hell. We're gonna crush your soul. Well, we're gonna hit you so hard, your ancestors will feel it. So the the forgettable DJ, how much is he up? I think like seven hundred and fifty thousand, something like that. No, he's not. He's up seven hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> he's and up well, like sixteen hundred. He's up sixteen hundred. Liz, Liz is up. I made you think about that. You had to think about that. Liz is up a couple of grand. So so far, my reckless strategy. I mean, I, I've not, I've not. To be honest, I've not impacted. I've told Liz yeah, to trade out your trades. It's just just yeah. gone mental. I've not influenced that, but so far I've got the leader. And and how much are your other two down? Um, I'll just tell the other like, two not to trade. I'll just because you're you're such as gonna lose. So you just don't trade, don't do anything. And I guarantee like 50, 50 and 100 bucks, something like that. Because they, they've kept their losses small. So 
Karen, Kara, and the forgotten DJ, and the other one who I don't even know the name of. Josh. They're, they're, all, they're all just going to lose. They're just going to lose trying. So my strategy is just don't even look at the market. Don't even open stocks to trade. Just go outside, have a nice day, and you'll, and you'll get through. Yeah, because that's what you do. <laughs> I don't. I, I, I trade and, and oh, it's, it's the market. Um, it, for me, the market over the last four or five weeks was quite short bias because we had the spy coming down and all the other stocks are following it. Um, well, and all the weed, as much as, as amazing as all the cannabis stuff was, I mean, it can come, come up into that October 17th and it's just been death since then. Yeah. I mean, there's that classic in October, the market historically falls and and history just repeated itself this October and we saw the spy and the QQQ all come down. Uh, so, I mean, it was, wasn't as, it was, it was easier as a short seller, I think definitely. But yeah, I mean, right now it's just, it's just choppy and it's tough and it's tough for the guys. And then penny stocks are quiet. Uh, I saw, I saw two gainers. I saw AYTU up 25% and I saw a couple of buyouts and that's just like, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's and like the funny thing is even, even AYTU, I mean, the volume was just, I mean, it's like, I, I, I talked about that milk stock. Free. Stocks trade pro. I'm like, man, if this was spring or fall or last winter, the same stock would have had a hundred times the volume. You know, the that's why I think we're just kind of up against this election. The volume yeah. is hell to me. It's just like you're, you know, obviously we're looking at the same gainers every day, and you're like, wait, the biggest gainer is up, has like fifty thousand shares traded at ten after nine in the morning. No, I mean, I think as a short, it's it's probably. If you can get the borrows as a short, it's a decent market because there's just not enough, not enough volume, not enough interest to push these these little stocks up. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's slow. It can be slow sometimes. I feel bad telling the guys here. There's only one stock I like, but it's, but I it's think you know that is. actually. In the and we the goal is you know part of the steady trade po- podcast is to be you know infotainment. You know you know we we hope to be educational as well as, you know, entertaining. But I think there's a lesson here as, as we wrap up this week one recap. Remember, especially if you're a small account trader, which I'm guessing the majority of you are, there are times when the best thing you can do is not trade. And I know that sounds so counterintuitive because we're all taught, you know, we're all taught this work hard, work hard, push harder, keep pushing no matter what. And in trading, man, there are times to push. You know, a month ago when we had weed stocks gone wild, that's when you push. And that's when you, that's when you make that five trades a day. And then there's other times, as much as you want to keep pushing, it's best to just back off. And I think that is the best lesson. You know, we're only two and a half days into this competition. But of this update, that's the biggest lesson. Preserve play defense, don't overtrade, don't get crazy when, like Steve and I said, there's one freaking gainer and it's got terrible volume. That's when you yeah. preserve your capital and you get ready because it'll always come back. You know, yeah. people, I, I've been trading for over 10 years and people have been talking about the death of penny stocks. And 2017 and the beginning of 2018 was probably the craziest year and a half ever in penny stocks. But yet, I remember in 2007, people were talking about, oh, the death of penny stocks. No, no, I, I, I totally concur with you, but... Concur? Yeah, what, Is that your word of the day on your calendar? Or where'd you get that? Uh, Define concur. I just saw uh, Catch Me If You Can was on Netflix. I didn't watch it. I just, just reminded us of it. Do you concur, doctor? Yes. Yes, doctor, I concur. It's just that famous line. But the, the, it's very, I think it's easy to tell people don't trade when there's not good setups. But the problem is none of a lot of these guys, a lot of these new people don't know the difference between a good setup and a bad setup. So they just have to throw mud at the wall and see what sticks and see what doesn't stick and find out what's working and then test every variable to find out what works in each situation. And it's a bit of a process to learn, but sometimes just trading is the way to learn. Trading, watching webinars, networking with people catching back on, on, on history and video lessons and learning from different people. It all, it all eventually ties back to, to figuring this crazy shit out. But, but, you, but you do figure it out. You do figure it out in the end. But it, takes a, it can take some time. Like, 
But for me, it started clicking after about six months. I was like, ah, wow, I get it. And I was like, oh, no, I don't get it. And I was like, ah, oh, I get it. I get it even more. You get the waves. Do you know what I mean? You get the oh, yeah. waves. Yep. You're probably too old to remember. But um, when you, when you, well, when no, you I learn. Mean, you know, you know, everybody in, in <laughs> If you're listening to this on iTunes, you can probably get what I'm doing with the hand gestures. But everybody expects this linear growth where, you know, you go from the bottom left to the upper right. And, man, learning any yeah. skill, I mean, it's messy. Whether it be advertising, podcasting, programming, electrician, plumber, stock trading. I mean, it's you're up and down, up and down. Now, the goal is to keep climbing to the upper right. But if you think it's just going to be this linear path, you're, you're, man, you're, you're way off. Yeah, no, it's, it's, but it's, but it's fun. And if you, if your heart is in it for the right reason and you're doing it for the right reason that you believe uh, that you, that you'll just love the markets and it's not really about the money as much, then, then you'll enjoy the process. I mean, I've, I've always loved the process. That's what, that's what's kept us in the game. But uh, if you're doing it for money, then it's a waste of time. So I hope, I know, I know just like there's no crying in baseball, there's supposed to be no hope in trading, but um, I'm looking forward to the next week. You know, we'll get, we'll get by the election tomorrow, um, would be tomorrow night. I expect, now we'll see, so a lot more volatility starting Wednesday, and I think we'll be back in a week with another recap, and Stephen will be probably drunk, crying, and, you know. And, Don't get and, drunk on the podcast and, and anymore. And ever. Us regretting the day <laughs> he ever decided to take on my team. So I think you'll be eating your words, honestly. Honestly, I think you'll be eating your words. Uh, cause literally or metaphorically. Yeah. Li- literally. I'm going to make you write them down on paper and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Aaron, AKA double a Ron from New York city. And I like to go outside and find a stray dog, preferably an aggressive breed like a pit bull or a Rottweiler. Then I get real close, stare it down eye to eye until it starts to chase me. Then I run. That's right, I run while listening to Steven and Tim on the Steady Trade Podcast. You can register to win real actual prizes at their website, SteadyTrade.com. And if you really like what you hear, give the podcast a five-star rating and write a glowing review on iTunes. I did, and this is how we say goodbye in New York City.